Greetings to all the subscribers and uh, anybody visiting new. Okay, so we are going to do another video, and the name of this video is Monergism and the Predestination of All Things. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because uh, recently I have posted a couple things on Facebook, and I've got a lot of hits on them and a lot of discussion and uh, a lot of back and forth, and I just felt, well, maybe I'll just make a video on this. And, of course, it's kind of like two different subjects, so I'm going to address them in two parts, most like, because I don't want this to be too long. So we will start with number one, and number one is monergism. And yes, I do agree with monergism. I am monergistic, meaning I am not uh, a synergist. I don't believe in uh, a unity of things to do something. I believe, as monergism means, the work of one. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. I want to read to you these posts first so we know uh, how this all started. The first one on the monergism was as follows. Monergism, meaning the work of one. If you don't believe in immediate Holy Spirit regeneration as the only means of eternal life, then you are not a monergist. Many that claim to be monergist are no more than backdoor synergist. Okay, that was the post on monergism. Now I'm going to read you the one that had to do with predestination. And actually, the post itself, I wasn't really aiming at predestination. I was wanting to talk about uh, the atonement. Was it particular or was it universal? But everybody just seemed to glue in on the subject of predestination or absolute predestination. And I'm glad they did because I learned something through the process. What I learned is a lot of times when I tell somebody that I believe in predestination, they think I'm talking about believing in absolute predestination or that God predestined all things. And I don't believe that. And I won't get into all that on this video. I'll do that on the next. That being said, I, I will read the post nevertheless. And it goes as follows. God has not predestinated all things. However, he has predestinated the elect to be conformed into the image of his Dear Son, Jesus Christ, none of God's elect shall be lost because Christ's blood was shed for them and them alone. The atonement was particular and not universal. Okay, so that is uh, the post on predestination, the atonement, uh, which we'll do in part two. So going on here, as we're in part one, uh, one of the things that I want to say is I don't do these things to divide people or make trouble. I do this as a teaching tool because what I've found and what I have been very guilty of through most of my Christian walk is, as many Christians, um, they don't know what they really believe or why they believe it. They may have been spoon-fed by a pastor or someone over a number of years, and they just take, any, take everything in as gospel, uh, you know, it, whether it's uh, subjects like uh, pre-tribulation rapture, which I used to believe in, or whether it's speaking in tongues, which I used to believe in, or a number of things, which... Now, I don't believe it's biblical, and I don't believe it because I've researched it out. I've, I've applied myself as a, a Berean, uh, looking at the scriptures to see if those things which I was told were so. And in many cases, they were not. And so, I do these things to 
uh, as a teaching tool to bring others to a place that they're going to start searching things out for themselves, and they are going to grow in the Word, grow in the faith, and not uh, be in a situation where Paul is talking to the Hebrews in uh, chapter 5 and verse 12, which says, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. I've met Christians who have not been Christians for a very long time, and they're very mature in the Word because they've applied themselves, they study the Word, they, they, they spend time in the Word. And I've met others who have been Christians for a very long time, and they don't understand many of the principles in the Bible, and what things they do sometimes are taken completely out of context because they don't learn the difference between exegesis and eisegesis and reading the Bible in context. That being said, we're going to talk about monergism. Now, monergism, the word meaning, is the work of one. If one does not understand either the definition being the work of one, or they don't understand math, meaning one equals one, or they have bad theology, then this whole idea of monergism isn't going to mean very much to them. So, in talking about monergism and eternal salvation, I'm going to read you one more scripture, and then we're going to talk about that. The scripture is going to be out of John chapter 3 and verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Immediate Holy Spirit regeneration. That means that the elect in time are regenerated by the Holy Spirit because we're all born spiritually dead. I'm going to try to make this as simple as I know how. We are all born spiritually dead. Some of us on this planet throughout all the time of human history, out of every tongue, tribe, and nation, God elected before the foundation of the world. And as we are born in the flesh, we are born as sinners. We are born uh, with a sin nature, and we commit sin also. And at one point in time, the Holy Spirit regenerates the human soul, takes out the heart of stone, puts in a heart of flesh, and that person is born from above. Now, can a person do anything to be born of above? No, he can't. Uh, you can't make yourself be born again no more than you made yourself to, b to be born in the flesh. What did you do to be born in the flesh? Nothing. What can you do to be born in the Spirit? Nothing. It's all of God. Salvation is of the Lord. Now, the Armenians would say it's a matter of choice that we receive Jesus or uh, we ask Jesus to come into our heart. Well, that's wrong because it's not a matter of choice. Man is born with a sinful nature, and it's not in his nature to seek God. The Bible says no man seeks God. And so the Armenians are wrong when we talk about choice. Well, what about what I call the backdoor synergist? Those are people who claim to be monergist, as many Calvinists do, but then they put stipulations on someone being born again. They, mean, they, they say, well, for someone to be born again, you have to hear the gospel to be born again. Okay, now we just left the work of one, and we've gone to the work of two. The work of two being you have someone who supposedly is hearing, and someone who supposedly is speaking the gospel to you, or maybe uh, you would be reading it. Well, then there are still another means besides only one mean 
that one mean being the Holy Spirit. So uh, I have a link I'm going to put on here. It's called the, uh, how, how is it said here? It's the, um, the Nicodemian Precept. It's a very good link. It's a sermon audio. It will go into this a little bit better. And um, some people have said to me, well, what kind of new doctrine have you got going here, Rick? Well, it's not a new doctrine. It was taught before the Reformation. Uh, the primitive Baptists, well, then the Welsh Baptists, they go back to 60 AD, long before John Calvin and the Reformation. And so I will put another link on here if you're interested in that, and I think it would be good reading for you to see where, uh, you know, this doctrine of immediate Holy Spirit regeneration, uh, it's not something the primitive Baptist just made up yesterday. It was here before John Calvin, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Reformers were even around. Um, so uh, I think the guy's name was uh, Bruno the Blessed, from 60 AD that brought the gospel to Wales. It's a good reading for you. So uh, just to uh, clarify this again, um, I'm not trying to divide anybody. I'm trying to bring a little discussion to the table, a little education, because many people have never thought about these things. They don't understand how they got saved. They don't understand that in, in one period of time, if you're one of God's elect, and I hope that you certainly are, that God birthed you from above, and you didn't even know about it. You didn't find out about it until later on in your life when maybe the gospel was preached to you, and you went, oh, yeah, I believe that. Well, the reason that you can believe it is because you were already saved. If you weren't, you wouldn't have had the ears to hear, and uh, you wouldn't have believed it at, at all. All right, well, um, check those links out. We will talk about the predestination of all things in the next video. Um, that one's a little bit more in depth. Uh, and if you have any questions about immediate Holy Spirit regeneration, put your questions in the comment section. Um, this is not some new gospel. This is what Jesus was talking about when he told Nicodemus, about uh, the Holy Spirit being like the wind and you can't see where it came from and you don't know where it's going. And, uh, and that's why the whole subject of birth came about in the Gospel of John because Jesus was using that metaphor to explain a spiritual truth that to this day many do not get. Okay. Amen. Goodbye.